You're listening to the one of us.net podcast network. movie convince mom and dad to take you to the theater this weekend to go see the life-affirming lady Macbeth. oh yeah <laughs> yeah have a couple of guinnesses first yeah we'll definitely do that well you're gonna have a few well not kids well yeah <laughs> no, we can't be advising children to drink i don't time, even know no. where to start yeah i know i mean really i'm I, trying to have a good sense of humor approaching this and it's just like I just can't even breathe. <laughs> well, that is kind of, I think, the atmosphere that the film Lady Macbeth is intentionally trying to engender is a frozen one of uh, steadily escalating despair. Well, there is there is a, a, a common uh, conversation argument, train spotting sort of mentality is to say whether a movie is a crime movie or a noir yeah. And a lot of people call noirs, or, or a lot of people just call gangster movies film noirs, especially if they're in black and white. Yeah. This is a film noir set in 18th century yeah. England. I kept Scotland. thinking it's period piece film noir. Yeah. Like, it's which, a total which, film noir. Is, it's, it's the postman always rings twice. I'm not sure I've ever seen anything like it in that context that you're just Never. like, wow, this is like Victorian era film noir. Yeah. How strange. How very strange. And also made me go, huh. What a cool idea. <laughs> and start thinking about other time periods that you could tell film noir. I mean, seriously, if they made a sequel to Lady Macbeth and it started with her walking into a private detective's office, we would not be surprised. Well, and you'd know the detective was going to be dead by the halfway through the movie. Well, yeah, he'll like yeah, be like, like, you know, at the end, he's like, like I said, the time I almost died. Right. Because, <laughs> you know, a film noir is when the guy... Usually the guy. I mean, it's very rare that the yeah. film noir is Centers around the, where the, the, you know, a dude does something he knows he shouldn't do. Yes. And it leads to doom. Yeah. Or he gets involved with a femme fatale, yes. if you w- uh, will. And he knows he him, shouldn't. He knows he shouldn't. And he makes the wrong decisions, but with the best intentions yeah. and ends up trapped in a mire. Here, our protagonist is the... She's not the Lady Macbeth from Shakespeare. I mean, this is actually uh, this is actually based on a book from 1865. Really? Yeah, I was surprised to hear that too because so much of the like ideas here are so modern. But when I was reading the synopsis of the book, I was like, "Wow, this is a lot like the movie they've made here. It's very, very similar." Wow. Um, which was uh, called Lady Macbeth of the Mitensk District by Nikolai Leskov. So it's it's actually already had multiple versions of it made and a play and everything it's actually pretty well known i'm just not as uh, uh worldly as i like to think i am so well, have you read any it. russian literature because i never have Dostoy- and, dostoevsky yeah mm-hmm. i've heard that it's the best it that, depends on what you read well like i mean as far as uh, it was Patton oswald i like the movie of anna karina <laughs> i did too yeah yeah but Patton oswald he said uh that the the russian writers that they've just suffered. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that they've just suffered generations and generations of suffering, and it has hammered them into being the best of all the writers in the world. He could be right. I uh, have never read anything because it's all oh, in Stanislaw Lem, too. I've read him. Stanislaw Lem, that's yeah. the stalker guy, right? Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, I've and, wanted to and, uh, check out Solar- the- Solaris. Solaris, that's the yeah. one. That's the one. Well, this is not science fiction. No. Like you said, this is definitely film noir. But and, I can see and, where it's very Russian. Uh, She's not Lady Macbeth. The title draws a comparison to Shakespeare's character of Lady Macbeth because there are definitely comparisons to be made here strongly, even though in this particular case, like I said, she is the protagonist. Uh, Catherine is her name, and she is played by relative newcomer, very young Florence Pugh. Who yeah. is fantastic. Yes. Um, it's 1865 when this movie is set as well. It's, oh, okay. it's in rural England, although it has a Scotland feel to it the whole time. Well, Macbeth having that in there. Yeah. And yeah, it's very like, you know, rocky and yeah. waterfalls and all that. It has, uh, yeah. It definitely kept expecting more direct references because of that as well. But um, she has been bought 
by a very rich man to be the wife to his son, who's not uh, the the father is very old, and the son ain't no spring chicken either. No, um, but she right from the beginning of the movie, she's just been married. Uh, she's brought in, and everything is just cold. The husband wants nothing to do with her. He's like, I want to see you naked, and, and that's about it. And then he goes to bed. Yeah, he goes to bed, and she's like, What the fuck, dude? Uh, and it, I know I would say what the fuck. Dude. I mean, she doesn't have anyone to talk to at right. all. The only other really person in this house that she has any connect, like, like day to day connection with, which isn't a connection. They just they're there together. Is Anna, the the black maid, who doesn't seem to think much of her and thinks even less of her as the film goes along. Not that you can blame her, uh, but <laughs> as you see. Um, uh, Boris, the father, and Alexander, the son, are both incredibly cold to her, to the servants, to everyone. And um, Alexander doesn't, like we said, doesn't even seem to have any interest in actually having sex with the woman. Every the women are treated as property, and she's no exception. And when Alexander has to go away to go to, as they say, there's an explosion or something, some some sort of disaster quite a distance away. Some industrial thing. So she it's... very quickly starts letting down her hair as she's like, wow, no one's here to watch me. Um, and, and she tries to reach out to Anna at that she point. She does. Anna she... is not terribly interested. And this is something that's very weird. She's told, don't ever go outside. Yeah. That's... <laughs> Well, it's all that sort of like, you know, woman in, in, in glass cases, you know, they, they're like, don't go outside. You, this house is your home. Outside is not your home. This is your home. You stay here. And the first thing she does is go outside. Yeah. She's like, fuck that. She goes out on the moors or wherever the fuck it is. And, uh, and it's like, lets her hair down. And after a little while, she, uh, very uncomfortably forms an attraction to one, uh, the groomsman, the new groomsman been played by Sebastian. Very uncomfortable because first, it looks like he just raped Anna. It looks like it was a gang rape. Yeah. And then he tries to rape Catherine. Well, she kind of flirts with him. Yeah, a little. In front of the other man. Yeah. But uh, but then, like, I mean, he flat out is gonna rape her. Oh, yeah. And then she's like, no, I want this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Awkward. When he goes up, yeah. But, I mean, it's the, the first, first time she meets him. Right. There's a certain amount of, like, like she doesn't know what to do. Right. And, I mean, he's played by Cosmo Jarvis, who apparently is a popular musician in England. I don't know who he is. That's me, though. So, no, But uh, this is his first acting role, as far as I could tell. And their relationship is hot and tempestuous, and they're having sex all over the house. And didn't. everybody knows. Yeah, and not only is he the servant, but he's also mulatto, right? And he's they're in her bed. It's not yeah. like she's banging him in the barn. But they're going to the master's bedroom. Yeah, they are just getting it on all over the place. The master's bedroom, the barn, like the like kitchen table, probably wherever, the window, whenever. They don't care. Drive through. Catherine is like, I'm White castles. into this. I finally know what it's like to actually like be treated by somebody with some degree of respect. How old do you think she's supposed to be? Because I think she's only supposed to be supposed like to be 16 about 16, 17. 17 yeah. yeah, yeah, very young. I mean, the actual actress when she filmed this was probably no older than 19 or 20. Yeah. She's 21 now. But as this goes along and things start falling back into place, she starts realizing and the audience starts realizing now that she's found this degree of freedom, she will do absolutely anything to keep that from stopping, which is not excluded to multiple murders. <laughs> Multiple murders. Yeah. She, and this really, that's where this totally turns into a film noir. And where I think the acting really starts to go just to like that nth degree of like, Jesus Christ, what all of these characters are pulling off. Special note that I did not see enough critics mentioning to Naomi Ackle as Anna, who is so traumatized, she actually becomes mute yeah. by everything she's witnessing. <laughs> she, she's just like, I can't sit with you. And then by, you know, halfway through, she's like, oh, I can't say anything. I can't do anything. Everyone is so great. And it's both, both her and, and Sebastian Cosmo Jarvis have definitely more of a, a, not exaggerated, more of a normal human reaction to things, if you will. Yeah. Whereas Catherine, it's almost like, like as it goes along, she goes from this character we have complete sympathy for to somebody who we're watching turn into a full blown psychopath. Totally, you know. And totally. her, her breathing changes. It almost seems like her, her face changes. Her eyes are turning blacker. Yeah, or well, something, the, the, you know? there's a framing device that where there there's a lot of just day to day drudgery of putting on your clothes. There's like yeah. Anna is just tightening her into this corset and she's wearing the hoop skirt 
There's no casual Friday on the moor. No, here. there is not. And, she, <laughs> and then she just is supposed to sit on the couch yeah, and, and just stare off into space. Wait for her husband to come home so she's there presented when and he gets there. It begins with her like nodding out on the couch. She's yeah. so terribly bored and alone. And then, as the stories progress, you see her on the couch and her hair's a little bit messed up. Yeah. You know? And it's... <laughs> as it goes along, she's just more and more, you, you know, even before she starts becoming someone we can't sympathize with anymore. I mean, there's a moment in this film where you're like, no one still sympathizes with her no. after that. But, yeah, but you're a... watching her become more disheveled, more, I just don't give a fuck, more willing to, I mean, there's a point where when her her father-in-law comes home and she can't stifle a laugh at something. And yeah. And she's like, oh, sorry. And yeah. she's not sorry. She's she not. shouldn't be sorry at that point. But but she's almost speechless for the first half of the movie. Yeah. There's like three lines. Woman and, should be seen and not heard is the, the, the p- position of this household. Yeah. <laughs> this big house. It was, it was, a uh, it was very weird. The movie, the whole movie was very weird. Well, in it's, that sense of like, how big is this house? Like you never really got a front view yeah, of the it place. It felt so, like in its own way, a castle. Yeah. You know, it's, it's big and it's echoey and most of the rooms are kind of empty. And the windows are sealed. Yeah. They weren't opening, closing windows. They yeah. had shutters, wooden shutters on the inside. Um, so you can imagine just how cold it gets. Yeah, the, the house is a mirror of how Catherine becomes herself. And it's interesting because at first you're like, you're really rooting for something to change for the better for this, this woman in the situation. But you see that she's become so affected by the abuse that she herself has been witness to and neglect that she has kind of incorporated those aspects into her own personality, you know, has become the, the abused has become the abuser, if you will. And universally. So she, I don't want to mention the horse. No, no. (laughs) Jesus Christ. There's a lot. There are several moments in this film that you'll be like, Oh my God. I'm not on your side. (laughs) I wanted to be on your side. And And now you're not even sympathetic. You start to feel sympathetic for Sebastian, who at first we're not sympathetic for at all. And then as it goes along, you're like, wow, she is just pulling your levers, man. She's just like, she knows exactly how to get you to do exactly what she wants you to do. And he's like, I'm. You have I he, he's like a lost babe in the woods almost, and yeah. to, to her she's just like, "Come here, it's time for you to give me your dick. That's your well, job." Well, <laughs> he's so dumb that he doesn't realize that they could have killed him just for going into the house. Yeah, you know. So then he goes from being that dumb to suddenly he's got like pussy power going on for him. You yeah, know? and he thinks he's bulletproof, and certainly yeah. we all know how pussy proof. We, we've so. all been there. <laughs> We've all been there. We've all been there. We've all had our little film noirs in our life. Yeah. We didn't necessarily murder anyone because of them, but we've definitely done some stupid shit well, there's because the, we thought we were pussy bulletproof. And there's like the moment before she goes too far is she, she does the most baller move. Literally, oh, yeah. The yeah. most baller move ever. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, oh, man, I love this chick. Yeah. Five that, minutes later, you're going, oh, wow. Yeah, her first crime, you're like, you go, girl. <laughs> Yeah, and then like just very shortly after, you're like, oh no, oh, no, no, oh, no, no, wow. no, that was a little too far. Eee. And then that's not even close to as bad as it gets. Yeah, um, I I love the way this is filmed. This director, um, William Oldroyd, really knows how to frame a shot. It's very painterly. It looks like an yeah. oil painting. Every frame looks like an oil painting. And just these uh, perspectives that, yeah. yeah and, and it's all yet very cold and sterile, just yeah. the same way that Catherine herself is the whole movie. Glad to have seen it on the big screen. Yeah, because it's just it's just so beautiful to look at, and yet so ugly to look at as it goes along. It it it. I, I read one critic said it dares you to turn your head away because it's so goddamn gorgeous, but the horror in front of you unfolding is just so hard to watch. Yeah, <laughs> and you know, even though it's set you know, over a hundred years ago. You kind of feel like this could work now. I mean, it really could work as a contemporary noir, not just the. Oh yeah, you could set this 50s. in a lot of different places. You could see a Jim Thompson esque version. Yeah, very, of this, very much. You know, transpose some details. Um, yeah, and there's obviously a lot of like 
a lot of stuff just under the surface about gender issues, about race issues, you know, what have you. But none of that dominates the sheer force of just the, the plot and the characters alone. Right. Yeah. yeah. You ki- I kind of wondered as far as the race goes, if that was some kind of meta commentary. Like, mm. well, let's just bring race into it as well. <laughs> because... I mean, I'm going, is this what feminism is? That well, <laughs> you just steamroll over everybody that ever wasn't nice to you? Because, I mean, there's a certain amount of, like, come on, man. You know? Like, yeah. You could have just left. I mean, I know. I mean, there's the whole thing, like, a white girl's hanging up with a with a half-black man and hooking up with him. And even trying, at least initially, to make some degree of friendship overtures to the black maids. So if you're like, okay, she's all right. Right? Yeah. Like, like. Like uh, the main character in Get Out's girlfriend. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> oh, um, and she's just so young, and yeah. like you're so sympathetic with her at the beginning. But, but when she's on the spot, she's does not care. She will use her whiteness. <laughs> she will play that whiteness card yeah. in a second. And class. Yeah. And the class card for sure. The the beginning of it. Before things started happening, I mean, just like the first 10 minutes of it made me think of uh, Nick Cave, made me think of like uh, how the the movie, uh, The Proposition. Yeah, great know, movie. I, I love, that's one of my very favorite, total noir you yeah. know, or, or total crime. I don't know. That's yeah. one where you total go, Western. it's so dark yeah. that it's like, it's it's black noir, yeah. but the, the yeah, yeah. Um, but just the way the dialogue works in that mm-hmm. movie with Ray Winstone, you know, because yeah. Nick Cave wrote the dialogue in it. So it all has the just beautiful affectations. Yeah. And like just like, I, that still felt natural, yeah. you know, coming out of their mouths. Everything about that movie works for me. And I just had this vibe at the beginning, like, oh, this is going to be like a. It felt like, like, like a, a red right hand should start playing or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not that song. I realize that's like the one song Nick Cave is like, Jesus Christ, I have other songs, oh, Hollywood. Yeah. <laughs> I have written other songs besides Red Right Hand. Okay, fair enough. I, I um I have to say there's some stuff I felt a little uh the cards were stacked against me, you know, like like the husband was so completely I don't care about you then I'm like why wouldn't you care you know like I, I, that was a little I mean there's one scene where he, he tells her to turn around and then he masturbates and it's like you know she's your wife I you felt can... like part of that was revealed later though right because you find out the husband actually does have a motivation for not being that into his wife that maybe he has some interests in another town entirely You're right huh. but still huh. you know he's, he's awfully loyal to that other town <laughs> but uh I mean, it just was kind of like, I'm just so, it seems like nobody is neutral. Yeah. You know, there's not just, except for Anna. Yeah. And then her neutrality is, you Anna's know what I mean? Like, like nobody is, the, the the like the stable hand guy, Sebastian, is just such a creep at the beginning. And then, yeah, like. Everybody you have very strong feelings about one way or the other, although some of those feelings change over time right. with, with Sebastian and Catherine. Uh, and with Anna, you just feel worse and worse for her. Uh, she's sitting there. I mean, you're like, the only dog she has in that fight is like, when is Doctor Who going to show up and get me the <laughs> fuck out of here? Because <laughs> seriously, this is not a good time to be a black person in. Well, even the casting, like the, the they were all old men. They looked like uh, in Superman, the holograms that are like <laughs> yeah. guilty. Yeah. They're all just these old, jowly, gross old men. They're going like, to send Florence, uh, Catherine to the, the, the to Phantom the, Zone. To the Phantom Zone. Yeah, I think she would that would not be able to hold her. Uh, Christopher Fairbank plays the older father here, and he's one of those character actors you've seen in a billion fucking different things, including be, being voice talent for the Wallace and Gromit uh, films. He's, he only, was, uh, he's only 10 years older than he was in the fifth element, which we were just talking about recently. So. He looked seven hundred years old. He did. He looked like he was about to turn into dust if the if the shutters opened and his, the sunlight the hit him. Bags under his eyes had extra bags. He did. Him. His bags had bags. He had to. <laughs> his, his eyes were so baggy. He had to pay an extra fee at the airport for them. <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't put that shit in the overhead compartment. <laughs> and, and, and there's one of those scenes. Okay, I'm an American. I eat with my right hand. I change the fork over from my left hand to my right hand when I'm cutting with the right yeah, hand. I thought know? it was just me. 
Yeah. I'm always embarrassed about that. I'm like, I should be equally proficient with both, and I'm not. I always think that, like, and then when I see the European thing of, because, like, sometimes people look cool when they're, like, cutting with their right and eating with their left. Yeah. Or they'll just, like, do it real fast, and you just think, oh, you Euro trash, disgusting <laughs> bastard with that's the fork a- upside down. You know? <laughs> oh, it's yeah, like, the fork upside down. That's thing. like, uh, and he has, like, scrambled eggs on his lip, and he just keeps oh, yeah. shoveling He's it spitting in. Spitting out eggs as yeah, he talks. Just bitching at her about stuff, and she's just like, oh, He's no, just no, so I grotesque, agree. he's Gollum. He's... <laughs> <laughs> with silverware. Yeah. 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 She goes crazy with with uh, Sebastian. Like, she seems to have no concept of law. Yeah. You know, like, That's oh, true. Well, just start wearing his clothes. And I hanging think there's out a the- point where she just doesn't give a fuck anymore. I, yeah. She's like, yeah, she's aware that this could all turn totally bad. But she's kind of like, anything is better than what I was living in before, yeah. which was not living. Yeah. You know, and uh, to that extent, you can, okay, yeah, sure. And like I said, we root with her. We're there with her for a while, but she goes to a point where no one can root for her anymore. Uh, <laughs> anyway. yeah, especially when you realize that the first step of the first killing is like, oh, that was premeditated. Yeah. Like, I didn't realize that no. at first. You get a lot of information after the fact in yeah. this film. And it's like, oh, I thought she was just being cold-blooded. But yeah. she was being more than ice cold-blooded. Yeah, so. they'll be the first killing. You're kind of like, what exactly is happening right now? Like, it's a little confusing until later on. Yeah. But anyway, let's go to final thoughts. Johnny, give me your final thoughts and then give me your arbitrary rating for it. <sighs> I gotta tell you, there's a lot to talk about, but I can't say that I liked it. You know, it just was very dour. Uh, there was no music in it at all. There was no yeah. soundtrack whatsoever. It was beautifully shot. It was uh, like, um, it seemed to fit the rules of like the Dogma 95, like yeah, all right. natural lighting, no makeup, no costume. It did like, feel like that. Like the clothes looked like they were from a museum. They didn't look like they were made by a costumer. There was <laughs> there were even uh, some weird fading to where you went, oh, that's a vintage dress. That that right. you know, like on her sleeve. Now that might not show up on a on a lesser screen, but we saw it on a pretty premiere yeah. uh, projection. Thank you, Violet Crown. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful projection. Um, I can't say that I I liked it, but I can't say that I didn't like it either. I mean, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's like, it just kind of leaves you going, God damn. It sucks what the, the life out of you. hell did I just watch? And uh, unlike like a Robert Mitchum noir, like... <laughs> <laughs> there's no, wow, that guy's cool. You know, like right, there's right. no antihero to it at all. There's, no. there's nothing like that. On the other hand, if you want to see like a, a Downton Abbey type period piece farther back, you know, a uh, Wuthering Heights type period piece noir, you, you're, you're going to be hard pressed to find something, you know. Yeah. It's Wuthering Heights with the bleakest of murders going on. <laughs> a complete uh, It's almost a horror movie. Almost. Yeah. It ver- it, uh, and Anna kind of pushes it to that point to yeah. where, I mean, she looks ghosted by the end of it. She's, oh, yeah. She's ashy and, and, and speechless. And um, I, I'm going to give it a, I'm going to give it five out of ten dead horses. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. You stole mine. Oh, um, sorry. That's all right. There's no way you could have known. There's no way I could have known. You know, um, I love for a guy who's generally very optimistic and very happy and very like, you know, always like, Hey, why look on the dark side? It's better to look on the bright side because honestly, either way you look at it, it looking at the dark side is not going to change anything except for the worse. So you might as well be positive because the uh, people respond to that, right? It's kind of my way of going about yeah. life. I'm a very like, you know, why happy dwell? go lucky type of guy. Why dwell? Exactly. That being said, I love bleak, dark as fuck movies. Yeah. Uh, totally. And literature. And I probably should read more Russian literature. <laughs> and this, I really responded to this film quite a bit. I, I just love the way it was shot. I love the, just there's multiple levels going on in this thing to think about. The complicated characters, uh, the arcs for Sebastian and Catherine, I just think are fascinating. And the way he, the director, writer, make your sympathies change. It's really interesting, and I think there's a lot to unpack here. I'd definitely be interested in returning to this film because, like I said, there's stuff they don't reveal to you till a little later to explain earlier stuff, and I would be curious to watch it again knowing all that. Now, that being said, I think for some people this is going to be a slog. 
because it's very slow moving for a while. But about it's the short. Point. It's short. It's bare, under an hour and a half. Oh, wow. Um, <clears throat> but I, like I said, I really responded. Great performances. This might even make my best of the year list for me. Wow. I, I, I really loved it. I'm going to give this very different people. N- nine <laughs> out of ten, and I'm going to borrow yours. Poorly buried horses. <laughs> <laughs> So glad I didn't live way back then. I mean, can you? I get bored after ten minutes of like no stimulation. Oh my god! I'm just like I've like I've been in a holding cell before, and I thought I would, had lost my mind by hour one. Well, you, you know, you yeah. look at those like Punch and Judy puppet shows. Yeah, they're, they're just two puppets hitting each other. Yeah, you but know? back then that, that was, was Netflix. <laughs> that was Netflix. <laughs> Oneofus.net has been your one-stop shop for all things geek for years. But there's a side to them many of you have never heard. The subscription side. Subscribe and listen to great podcasts like The Breakfast Pub, The Original Gentleman, and the Watch a Movie With Us series. Head on over to oneofus.net and don't forget your towel.